very, very, very important reason for the creation of the local government is to remove the fear of insecurity and the fear of ethnic domination of the major group from the minority group. In a large country such as Nigeria, where we have different ethnic groups, different um, we have different ethnic groups, we have different religions, we have different cultures, different traditions, different values, different ethnic beliefs, and you know, just a lot of diversity. We need local governments. The local government helps the people, helps, uh, helps to assure the people of the minority groups that the people of the majority group will not dominate you because we are here, we are your government. And we will ensure that these people do not dominate you. They take into, they take into, um, they take into account the differences of each person. They take into account the differences of each ethnic group, the differences of each relation. They, they make sure that these variations are well respected and their needs are met. Through the local government, the variations of these variations, these diversities are met, they are recognized and are provided for. The local government is structured in such a way that they can, they take into account the diversity of the people. They are different traditional structures and they respect it. So yes, that is one of the reasons why we need the local government to remove the fear of insecurity and the fear of um, the um, ethnic domination of the minority of the majority um, of the majority group from the minority ones. Another important reason for the creation of the local government is communication. Communication. The local government serves as a two-way communication link between the people at the rural level and the state and the federal government. They tell us what the federal government wants us to do. They tell us what the federal government has done for us so that we can appreciate them better. And they equally tell the federal government what we need, our present demands. So let's take a look at this scenario. During um, the, when the COVID-19 just started, the federal government will tell the people, the, um, the local government areas, the state government will tell the local government, um, the people at the, the local government to inform the people that there is a virus going around right now. It is called the COVID virus. The mode of transmission is through, you know, touching things that a infected person has touched or through coming in contact with an infected person and, you know, all those stuff. And then they also tell them, this is the best way we can reduce the spread of the virus in our local areas. Let's maintain social distance. Let's make sure that we use our face masks. Let's make sure that we sanitize regularly. When we get into our houses, the first thing we do is we should wash our hands. So yes, it's the local government that will communicate these things from the federal government to us. They will also tell us the good things the federal government has done. The federal government has given us 20% out of the money needed to construct our feeder roads. The federal government has promised that they would give us, um, they would look into our, the issue of incessant power supply in our rural areas. They communicate um, what the federal government has done, what the federal government wants from us to us, and they equally communicate what we want from the federal government to them. So the local government serves as a two-way communication link between the people at the rural level and the federal government. Another thing the local government does is they maintain law and order within our rural areas, within our local levels. They, man they make sure that not everybody don't just get their waste, things are not just done anyhow. And one important part that is vested into the local government is the power to make bylaws. Bylaws, bylaws. What are bylaws? A bylaw is a law or a rule made by the local government to regulate their affairs. The local government is in charge of making bylaws. They're in charge of maintaining law and order in, within their rural areas, within their rural levels, within the grassroots level. They maintain law and order. And for everybody that breaks a bylaw, they are charged to the customary court. The customary court is the court where the local government presides, where decisions, um, where offenders, where those who break bylaws, they are being punished and they are giving their offense. Um, they are giving their punishments and all that. So the local government is in charge of maintaining law and order at our local levels. They make sure that everything is going smoothly in the local levels. Another reason why we have the local government is, for the creation of the local government, is for experimentation of policies. So what the local government do, what the local government do in this regard is, 
they serve as grounds, as you know, small areas where we can test a policy first. And then if the policy goes well, we take it to the um, national level. If the policy fails at the local level, we end it there. So the local government serves as they serve as they serve as areas, small areas for experimentation of policies. They serve as experimentation ground for policies. So yes, before we human beings, we use drugs that we use. They would have probably tested it on a lab rat. If the lab rat dies, they know that equally this drug has the capability of killing have the, has the capacity of killing a human being. So they would not even give it to us. So yes, what the local government area does is they serve as small experimentation grounds for government policies. So let's take a look at this example. So we, um, the national, the federal government has found out that people are not paying their NEPA bills. Maybe, and they have various reasons for not paying it. Some say they don't give them light and they are charging them, um, you know, bills. Some says that the light has destroyed a lot of things in the house. And, you know, various excuses are being brought by the citizens of a country for, uh, as reasons why they would not pay their NEPA bills. And then the federal government thinks, okay, let's, let's change. Instead of them paying NEPA bill, let's bring prepaid. And so they decide to bring prepaid for the people. They say, let's use prepaid. So they, they decide to bring prepaid to Nigeria. Like for everybody in Nigeria, they want us to use prepaid so that we only pay for what we use. And then they discover that if they bring prepaid, these people might not pay the NEPA bills they've been owing, they are owing before. And so they decide, okay, let's, let's experiment this policy first in Six, six local governments in each state to see if it will go well with the people. And then if it doesn't go well with the people, we we'll let's go. So they decide that, okay, now that we have, we've decided that let's give everybody in the country prepaid. How do we ensure that these people pay back the money they are owing? They are owing for their, um, power supply bills before. So they say, okay, let's ensure that for each time they buy on their prepaid card, we collect 10%. Um, of what they are owing before. So if I owe 30,000 naira before as my, you know, power supply bill, they take 3,000 naira away for each time I want to buy a prepaid. So for each time I want to buy, um, card on my prepaid. For each time I want to buy, um, for each time I, I buy on my prepaid card. Then they try it within six, six, six local governments in each um, state. And then they find out that, oh, it's working well. So each time somebody wants to come and buy on their prepaid card, they ensure that they have 10% of what they are owing before, plus the amounts they want to buy on their prepaid card. Okay, this policy is working well in Ibadan. It's working well in Cross River. It's working well in Portacourt. Let's make it a national policy. Let's, let's, um, let's take it on a national scale. So, the local government in this regard has served as the experimentation ground, the lab rat for that policy. And if the policy, since the policy went well, they take it to the national level. If it doesn't go well, it dies at that local level. The next reason for the creation of the local government is for the training and development of future political leaders. So the local government serves as a training ground for um, serves as a training ground and a development ground for future political leaders. So, as I said earlier, it, um, um, when we looked at the point of local participation, we said that it encouraged the people at the local levels to participate in the affairs of their country. So another thing the local government, another reason for the creation of the local government is that they serve as a training ground for the development of future political leaders. A local government provides a forum for political for potential politicians to start to learn the techniques and skills of politics. During local government elections, the people that have interest in politics, they learn how to campaign, they learn how to contest in elections, they've seen how those ahead of them are doing it, and so they learn, okay, yes, this is how we contest for elections, we look at the problems that are affecting the people, we, we, when we are, you know, when we are campaigning, we tell them the problems, we tell them how we are going to deal with the problems, they are learning at their local level. They've seen how politicians at their local le levels campaign. They've seen how they contest for elections. So they are learning at their local levels. In their local government council meetings, the councillors they learn how to serve in the community. In, they learn how to 
In their local government council meetings, the councillors learn how to serve in communities, they learn how to preside over committees. So just within the local level, they've learned how to they've learned how to preside over um, meetings in their local level. So when they get to the national level, it's not going to be new to them. So it serves as a training ground for them. They also learn how to represent their awards functionally um, at the various levels. For each local government, they are divided into several wards. So yes, they learn how to rep represent their awards within the local level. They learn how to represent their award at the council meetings. Okay, this is the problem affecting their, their award. They've learned how to put the problem forward. So the local level, the local government, they serve as, it serves as a training ground and a development ground for future political leaders. And then this, with these experiences that our local politicians have, these um, people that are interested in um, politics have, they can graduate to perform effectively as a national level in politics. They can graduate to perform effectively at a national level in politics. So the local government serves as a training ground for the development of future political leaders. Another reason for the creation of the local government is for employment and for employment and community development. When we have a local government office in this area, they employ people there. They employ people within the local, the rural areas to work there. So in that way, they provided employment for people at the rural areas. They also provide a platform for community development. So those that are probably financially buoyant in the community would, you know, donate cash, donate resources to help in construction of roads, to help in creation of borrow for the people. So the local government as a small area, they serve as, um, a, a, a area for community development and they also provide employment for people at the local levels. Another reason for the creation of local government is that they act as agents of the they act as agents of the central and the state government in implementation of policies. So you would remember that during the peak of the COVID-19 um, of the coronavirus, our local people, uh, our local governments were they were part of those that were passionately implementing the policies of the national, of the federal and the state government at our levels. Ensure you use your nose masks, ensure there's social distance, sanitize regularly. And at a point in time, they even distributed sanitizers to people. And then when the time came for us to get vac vaccinated um, for the COVID-19 virus, it was at our local levels that this policy was implemented. It was at our local public health care centers that we were able to get our vaccination at our, at our local level. So they serve as agents that help the federal and the state government implement their policies. So having looked at the reasons for the creation of the local government, you would be able to see one or two places you have benefited from the work that the, from the work that the local government does from us, you will see one or two ways that you've been able to benefit from the local government, from what the local government has done for us. Next class, we'll be looking at the functions of the local government. You remember that, yes, we've looked at the functions of the local government earlier, but that was to help us understand this third person in the trinity of the local, of the, of the gov, of the, um, of the government of a nation, which is the local government. So we'll be going proper into the function of the local government in the next class.